drag racing is really in my blood. So I thought, well, it might be fun to go drag racing with a nostalgic deal, and I've always been a fan of the, the slingshot design front engine dragsters. So I started just doing Google searches for front engine dragsters for sale. And after doing that a few times, uh, on I think it was the 12th page, as I'm you know, scanning through, there was an ad on Craigslist in Helena, Montana under garage sale. And I'm reading through this paragraph and the paragraph read something like, uh, washer and dryer still works, 50 bucks. Gas range, I think it works, $10. Um, refrigerator needs element or something $25 and then it said 185 inch front engine dragster as soon as I found that it was a former top fuel car I decided that I really couldn't update it and go nostalgic racing if it had just been some lower class econo rail or something like that I probably would have gone ahead and updated it and just had fun but once I found out it was a top fuel car I just thought that really the car needed to be restored to its original condition, particularly since I had found the original guys. They had all the information and I uh, took it on myself, I guess, to try to restore the car and hopefully, while they were still alive, bring all of them back together and reunite them. I'm Scott Hannum and I've restored number 515, the Martin & Smith Top Fuel Dragster. Once I got back to Denver, I invited a few friends over to take a look at it and see what they thought. And I also found a chassis tag. So this one was from Harold Wilson Chassis Manufacturing in Wichita, Kansas, and it had a serial number. So I thought, well, there's a clue as to where this thing came from. I thought maybe I should investigate that and see if I can find any history on the car. So I called a friend who's very much into the nostalgic drag racing scene and I said, hey, I found this old dragster, why don't you come and look at it? And it's got a chassis tag in it from Harold Wilson in Wichita. And he said, well, you know, Tom Hanna is from Wichita. Now, Tom Hanna is a very famous uh, builder of bodies, aluminum bodies. And he used to build some of the nicest cars that you've ever seen in drag racing back in the day. An incredible craftsman. And he's originally from Wichita. So this friend of mine said, well, I know a guy that used to work for Tom Hanna. Let me call him and if he, see if he knows anything. So he called his friend who said, well, yeah, I know a guy who used to work for Harold Wilson. And let me give him a call. So he called the old gentleman that used to work for Harold Wilson and found out that Harold had since passed away some years ago. But he had the original log books from the shop from 1964 up until about 1974. So we gave him the serial number and he looked through the logbook and lo and behold, he found that serial number with a simple entry that just said, Ron Martin update and the serial number. And that was it. But from that, we had a name. And during one of my Google searches for the name Ron Martin, a page came up from a website called Front Engine Dragsters from the 1950s through the 1970s. And so I'm looking through this Facebook site and I don't see anything, I don't see anything, and suddenly I come on to a photograph, black and white, that was of a dragster, sort of from uh, just ahead of the engine, back towards the cowl and the cage. And it said, Here's Ron and I's old fueler. And it was from a guy by the name of Bob Smith in Kansas City, Missouri. And I thought, that looks just like the car. The proportions, everything looked just like it. So then I started researching Bob Smith, because now I have another name. I did find a Bob Smith in Kansas City, Missouri. So I called him up and he answered the phone and I said, did you used to race a top fuel car with a guy by the name of Ron Martin? And he said, well, yes, I did. Why? Well, I think I've found your old dragster. And he said, oh my goodness, after all these years, I always wondered if the thing would ever turn up.
over the next number of months, uh, I had a lot of conversations with Bob, and then he got me in touch with Ron Martin. Ron originally built the car in 1968 as a top gas car. Still had a blown Chrysler in it, but it was a shorter wheelbase. It was approximately 165 inches, and it had a full body on it. And then after 71, they decided it was time to go big time, and they wanted to update to top fuel. So they took it to Harold Wilson, and what they did in the update was they stretched out the wheelbase to 185 inches. They built a new short body, and then they added the canard wings, because at that time, the tire and clutch technology had advanced some, and they needed to try to keep the tires more planted on the ground. And the quickest and fastest this car went was a 6.48, 6.48 seconds in the quarter mile, at 223 miles an hour. And what's kind of uh, funny about that particular run, from what I've been told from Ron, is that he got to the end of the track, and he went to turn to get off of the main track, and the car wouldn't turn. And he couldn't really figure out what was going on. So he stopped the car, and when he got out, he noticed that both front tires had blown off the rims. So when he went to try to turn, it was just on the steel rims, and there was no traction to turn, and it just skid sideways. It was never a championship car. It never won a national event, but it would go a few rounds, and it was competitive for uh, that time period throughout the Midwest area. And they decided after a few years that they had probably, uh, it, the car had run its course and uh, the front engine car was just no longer competitive and they didn't want to build a new rear engine car. So they sold the car after a few years of it sitting around in 1976 and they lost track of the car. They never knew what happened to it until it showed up uh, in Helena, Montana and that's when I found it. So that over the next couple of few years, I spent restoring the car based on all the information that both Ron and Bob gave me. We think that it did run as an Econo rail at some point in time because the motor mounts it had were similar to what you would use for a small block Chevy. But uh, other than that, the car was surprisingly complete. We know that these are the original front wheels. The, uh, this is the original fuel tank. The bodywork, except for the cowl, has been modified a little bit because somebody had chopped it off to put the small block Chevy back farther. So we had to, we had to fix that. But the body panels are the same. The canard wings, the, all the inner structure and the side panels of the uh, wings are original. We did reskin them because they were in pretty bad shape. The seat is, what we, from what we can tell, is the original seat. As far as the, the, uh, the bucket itself is the original one, although we've reupholstered it. This was a high gear only car, meaning that there was no transmission. There was just a clutch and a drive shaft in the rear end. As far as the engine goes, we knew exactly the components and the types of parts that were used. The car didn't have an engine in it when I found it, but it did run an early Chrysler. We knew exactly which block and heads, which cam it used, which blower, which blower manifold, which injector. It's an Enderly uh, bug catcher. We knew exactly which barrel valve, even the Donovan valve covers with the high breathers. So we had not only the knowledge of Ron and Bob, but we had all the photographs. So what we did was set, we really set out to try to duplicate exactly what it had and we were able to find period correct original parts. They are not the parts that the car had, but they are period correct originals of what the car had. We got the car back together and we were able to debut the car at the 2017 NHRA Hot Rod Reunion in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And we were able to get both Ron and Bob to attend. And the highlight of the entire project was to have those guys come up to the car and see it for the first time in 43 years. They had sunglasses on, but you saw big alligator tears just run out from behind their glasses. And uh, Bob was even 
uh, almost sobbing at the sight of the car and just couldn't believe that here it was. And they were uh, able to spend the whole weekend at the reunion and Ron actually drove the car in the Cackle Fest Saturday night. So it was an incredible reunion of, of Carr and, and the original guys. Uh, I got a lot out of it. We made a lot of new friends and we've stayed in touch ever since. And it's just been a joy. Fantastic. <laughs> One take. Beep, 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 beep. Sorry. Fly just hit my chin. <laughs> <laughs>